Hi all you expressive photographers and welcome to the channel. Uh, as I promised last Sunday, we're gonna start looking at some of the photographs that got taken on the recent workshop that I was running on the west of Scotland, uh, hanging out with Adam Gibbs and Tom Heaton and of course the client that we were with. Uh, and also to keep up that light-hearted, more enjoyable atmosphere that I was hoping to uh, run the rest of my life doing basically. Uh, so today we're gonna prove that the Wacom pen is mightier than the sword um, and we're going to take a look at just one photograph actually and it was the very first photograph that I took um, as we were even driving to the workshop so it was a couple of hours in and we were just driving up the road there was some nice light on the trees and we just decided to stop and stretch our legs and we have to really understand why we make photographs what is it in the landscape that's asking us to point our cameras at it and the experience, like I discussed on Sunday, is so important, you know, being there and appreciating being there, not wishing it was something else, not wishing that the light was better or, you know, we were in a more dramatic place, but we are there, we are enjoying being there and we are pointing our cameras at cool stuff. So let's dive straight into my Lightroom here and we're going to start looking at this photograph and uh, yeah, let's see where we go. I've got no thoughts or ideas at all where this is gonna go. Um, so we'll talk about all the different ways that we can process or how we can think about our processing. And hopefully that's gonna give you some insights into how you can be more like you and process images that are going to suit your expressive needs. So we have two versions of this file. I literally just took two frames and then moved on to something else. Um, and if we look at both of them, we'll see uh, some of the little triggers that we might use to decide which of these two photographs to process. So if I just dive into the first one, uh, now we can see this is uh, at one over 800th of a second um, at 1000 IS, so 320 millimeters. Um, and this is handheld. I hadn't even set up my tripod. And the second frame is also the same shutter speed and ISO, but slightly more zoomed out. So let's just look at the first photo and then the second photo and maybe make a decision as to which one is most suitable. So in this first photograph, the first thing to do is to zoom in. And as we can see, it's not tack sharp. It's, it's not bad, but it's not tack sharp. And if I scroll forward to the second frame, that is way, way sharper. So that's instantly um, one reason why we might choose the second photo over the first, is it's just sharper. With these kind of uh, big forest scenes zoomed in like this, I'm not that bothered about critical sharpness. So the composition has to be more important to me still. Having a little bit of softness in a frame like that really doesn't bother me terribly much. Prints or big prints looked across uh, or looked at across a room, no one's ever going to see it. And likewise, if someone's looking at a thousand pixel square on their phone on Instagram, they're not going to see it either. As far as I'm concerned, looking at this on my uh, monitor, which is, you know, nearly a meter away from my face, I can't tell which one's sharp or not. So don't let things like that totally freak you out. Uh, I'm not an obsessively sharp kind of person. You can tell by the way I dress. What does interest me more is up in this corner here, you can see there's a birch tree there right on the edge and it's creating this white zone up there. Um, and there's another little section of it down here. Things like that really catch my eye. And if we go to the second frame, you will see that I've zoomed out slightly from 320 to 300 millimeters and it's created a bit more space. Uh, which just makes this area feel less enclosed. So I think with the combination of a sharper file and a slightly more spacious composition, I think I'm gonna go with this photo to process. So if we jump into the develop module, you'll see the first thing that happens is that the whole color contrast palette changes. If I go back to uh, the, the, the library module, you'll see that that preview is what came from the camera, that whatever presets I had on the back of my camera has given it this look, so the white balance and the contrast. And as soon as we open it in uh, the develop module, all of that color goes, it looks really flat, low contrast, and basically we're, we're looking at a completely different photograph. 
Now I find that somewhat alarming. Uh, we can create presets to import our photos with, um, but I think just over the years, you just have to condition yourself to the fact that you're starting from a slightly different point than maybe we, you know, when you're looking at the photo originally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a few uh, straightforward changes here. So removing chromatic aberration, there's no profile for this lens on my system. And the thing that does bother me slightly is it seems slightly skewed. Um, so I've straightened off that bottom horizon there, just that, uh, the, the loch shore, um, and it's just straightened things up a little bit. Now there are a few little sections up here um, where there's a few little bright patches, but we'll deal with that later on, I think. You'll see at the top of my Lightroom screen there, it says you're the best in the world at being you. This isn't for my benefit, this is for your benefit. You are the best in the world at being you. And the way you process your photos has to be unique. It has to reflect that individuality. Um, otherwise, you just end up processing like Alistair Ben or any of the other people who do processing videos on YouTube. So what I want you to do is appreciate that you can do this your own way. Um, and as long as you love it, then that's fine. I'm not the type of person that is going to process doing a sort of A, B, C, D, E program, you know, procession of, of tasks. Uh, you know, I'm not one of these people that will sort white balance and then look at my exposure and so forth. It's just not how I work um, because I prefer to look at each individual photo and think, well, how can I make it interesting? Um, I don't want you to sit here watching this video thinking this is the way to process photos. What I want you to learn from this is how can you process your photos to make the, make the whole situation enjoyable and exciting and fascinating and exploratory and how can you experience a different way of doing things from the way you've done things before. Some of my very best friends are some of the world's greatest landscape photographers and each of us has our own slightly different approach. Some people will start with a plan. They will start with a, an end point already in their mind and they will work towards that slowly. That vision may have come to you in the field um, or it could come to you when you're sat in front of the computer. Uh, if, that's, if you do have a clear vision in mind, go for it. Work towards that, that's fine. Most of the time I don't um, and I'm just happy to explore the creative process. Now that's slightly unusual when I'm talking to uh, thousands of people online, but the, the concept is there that I can approach this. So if I explore the, the color and the contrast, I mean, I like moody photographs. I mean, I think that should be pretty clear from, from any videos that you've watched of mine so far is I like them moody. The first thing that happens if I, increase the contrast in this photograph, you see that the colors get super saturated. There's a direct link between uh, contrast and saturation. And, and as soon as we add contrast, we boost saturation. So we might even feel that we have to come back in and tone it down a little bit, you know, bring down the vibrance just to suck some of that intense uh, saturation out of it. There is a lot of saturation in these leaves. They were wet. It's middle of autumn, everything is super saturated. So we need to be careful about that. Um, so I'm going to, one of the reasons I like to look at dark photos is it gives me this map of luminosity. We've got the bright yellows are obviously eye catching and we also have the vertical uh, branches of the birch trees, they're also white. So we end up with this kind of mosaic of uh, yellows and these very bright whites. And what might be getting lost here slightly is the, the oranges in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push the oranges a little bit to, Look at some of the other tones in the image. Now, there's not a lot of green in this, but there is some. So I'm just going to eyeball that. 
And playing with the luminance channel uh, in the HSL there is a really good way of adding more contrast or changing the contrast. We want to bring an emphasis into some of these other tonal areas. Now, uh, since the last time I did a processing video, Lightroom have had an update and we're now dealing with this mask situation, um, which I'm slowly but surely getting used to. I'm just gonna pull up a very quick uh, gradient there from the bottom because I just want to I want to make that foreground a little bit more prominent this is the way I process I look at areas and think well if that change if I change the way that feels how will it relate to the other things it's very common with photographs like this to photograph the the subject and the full reflection and we've seen hundreds of millions of that type of photograph before either just the reflection or the the trees and the reflections and i didn't want the, the reflection to be too dominant um, because i thought there was enough structure in the actual trees themselves i'm going to add a second gradient here i'll make that one kind of long and I'm just going to reduce the clarity and maybe add a touch of dehaze and then I'm going to darken it. So what I'm doing is I'm making that band at the top less prominent. So I've added a layer at the front, a gradient at the front to make the foreground a bit more prominent. Uh, we've dealt with the global luminosity and contrast and then I've added a gradient at the back to pull down the back to make it You know if I turn that off We can see that it's um, it, it That's very flat everything's everything's kind of explicit whereas by changing that we've created like three layers um, in the scene there. So we've got the main area of the trees, we've got the foreground reflection, and then we've got this area at the back, which I'm trying to make less dominant, really. There's no way that you can follow a process when you're processing. Um, if you do, you're going to end up somewhere that you may not want to go. And I think this is a really important learning point in today's video, is that if you don't have a destination in mind, why follow a map? You know, if you want to explore your creativity, do so and try all sorts of different things. Now, there's any number of different ways I can change the feel of this photograph now. Looking at the white balance, it is very warm. And as I introduce cooler tones, so by cooling that white balance, the whole photograph just gets a bit more austere. It feels a bit more serious. The light feels less intense. The energy seems to be subdued. This is expressive processing. This is allowing the content to be articulated in different ways. And I think this is a really important skill for you to develop also. Every slider you move in Adobe Lightroom or any other processing software changes the feel of the photograph, changes the mood of the photograph, and changes the expressive qualities of the photograph. I'm not doing very well with my being more serious uh, or being less serious. Um, whenever I start talking about this stuff, I tend to get really intense about it because I believe in this stuff. It's really important to me. Um, I am also going to explore what happens if I flip this photograph. Now that suddenly feels more open again. And I think it's because I pulled this bright area over to the right hand side. It just feels like now we've got a dark side and a light side. And because it's pulling us to the right, it doesn't feel quite as intense. Uh, if I flip it back round to the way it was, everything's pushing us off to the left hand side and that leaving us with this darker right side. So the image feels darker. So I am actually going to make this one. I'm going to make it a little bit cooler still. And I'll go with that. Now, I've reached a stage with this processing where I need to do a little bit of tidying up, just a little bit of cloning, tidy up some of those things. So I'm just going to pause the video here, jump into Adobe Photoshop, and uh, start 
from a, a new section. So now we're in Adobe Photoshop. I tend to do all of my um, spot healing and things like that. So you can see there's lots of these little white bits all these little areas that catch my eye. So the cloning brush is such a great way to deal with these now. Uh, this little spot healing brush, they, um, it's just so much better than the one in Lightroom. I, I really struggle with the one in Lightroom. Now this area down on the right hand side feels a little bit, I'm not too happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, now into Nick Color FX. I'm gonna do quite a heavy glow to this. Uh, so I think I will just do that now. So you'll see straight away, as soon as I bring this into Nick, um, I, I do have a preference for the way I like to deal with forest scenes in terms of the atmosphere and the mood that I like to put onto them. I use the glow. This is basically like a, it's like a kind of really fancy Orton effect. It's making this amazing glow, but you can see how the glow kind of suppresses the shadows uh, quite nicely. So there's almost like a vignette happening in this photograph. Um, we can deal with the saturation and we can further dial in um, the tone, the color tone that we're looking for. So I'll keep with a reasonably warm, uh, sort of slightly cool uh, glow. Um, and then the tonal contrast is the second part of this action. And it's a way to make sure that we keep, you can see if I pull back the, the, the shadows there, it gets very flat. And if I push it to the right, it starts adding more of that black contrast in. I don't want too much, but I don't want too little. Uh, so again, it's a way to dial that in so that the, the glowing effect and the shadows are being dealt with really, really nicely. I'm gonna take that right back though. The highlights there. So that's producing a kind of an aesthetic that I really like. It's that kind of moody, uh, closed in, slightly claustrophobic, but giving a stage for these beautiful warm tones to play with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click that, let the computer do its uh, very quick process there. And then I'm gonna save that back into Adobe Lightroom and we'll finish this image in Lightroom. So that's us back in Lightroom with the version now that's had the processing done to it. We can still see some areas of this beautiful uh, orange light that haven't been affected. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a quick vignette onto this. Um, a good thing to do with your vignettes is to make them huge. Uh, so you just do Command minus on a Mac, I guess it would be Control minus on a PC. And that way you can make the image a lot smaller create a big, big uh, ring for your gradient, turn that off and then obviously I can make the image bigger again and I can decide how I want to vignette this. Now I can pull in the shadows, so I can darken the shadows, I can darken the black slightly and of course pull down the exposure. Now you can see because that ring was so huge the vignette is very, very diffused. So it's it's not hugely um, obvious, actually. I mean, it still feels like it's vignetted, but it's not like horribly so. And then I'm gonna come in and um, I'm gonna use another brush here and I'm gonna warm that brush a little and increase the saturation and a little bit of exposure just to highlight some of these areas that are just being a little neglected. Just to pull up that orange a little bit and then also that kind of rooting area in the bottom there as well. So we're kind of getting there they can see the dark bottom has got a little bit too dark now. So I'm going to bring up another linear gradient 
and quickly add some whites in there just to lift the exposure of that reflection just so we know that we're there's water there um, and that way every time we add luminosity to something we're making it a little bit more eye-catching and now I can just finally go back into the global histogram and just say well we can lift it a touch lift the highlights a touch so just opening it again slightly we can see here we've got nothing in the whites or very little in the highlights most of this is a mid-tone to shadow image if we go back to some of the other videos that I've talked about the emotional histogram and the emotional spectrum of how we how our photographs are going to feel then we know that darker images are going to feel moodier but because we've got so much of this beautiful warm golden sunrise type light in our trees um, they lift the mood of the photo so it's somber but it's it's still uplifting it's kind of melancholic it's almost like we're reflecting upon the autumn that's passed as we're now moving into winter there's so much in this photograph the experience that I had in the field the time I've spent processing it what it means to me at this time of my life I'll be 55 in a couple of weeks time I'm at that stage in my life where I'm thinking about my future and I'm looking back on my past with fondness and all the things I've experienced. Photography is so much more than just making pretty photographs. You are the best in the world at being you. I'm the best in the world at being me. Don't try and copy my processing. Find your own path. Understand that Lightroom or any other processing software can deliver exploration excitement and passion to you process the photos that speak to you and realize that you can make them look any way you want and I'm not massively departing from reality I haven't cloned in skies or dropped in Milky Ways this is the data that was given to me even though it's very different from the original raw file let's have a look at that now here we can see the original file on the left and the work file on the right they clearly look very, very different. The distribution of luminosity, contrast, color, and geometry is different. We've leveled the one on the right. We've dodged and burned to create depth and three-dimensionality. We've added glow. We've added a lot of atmosphere. Uh, we've changed, we've created more contrast in the colors, you know, from the yellows to the greens to the oranges. We've added transitions. We've added changes. The image on the left looks quite homogenous. It looks kind of samey. What we've done with the image on the right is we've made it seem like there's an awful lot more going on. And really there is. It's just the cameras recorded those similar tones to be very similar. Uh, you know, the oranges and the, and the yellows are much closer in the raw file than they are in the word file. So hopefully you will have found a little bit of inspiration in this video. What I wanted to do was show you that you don't have to approach your processing as a rigid, structured, start with this, then do this, then do this. You're very unlikely to surprise yourself with that type of approach. I allow each photograph to be almost like performance art. I sit here and I look at the image and I allow the image and myself to build a relationship and we can move forward to create something that's surprising. I don't think I would have thought about this final version of the photograph when I sat down to process it. The fact that I was talking to you guys at the same time kind of is distracting, but what it's allowed me to do is to have a very intuitive relationship with the raw file. And I'm really happy with this. I mean, I think it's a beautiful photograph. And for saying it was 10.30 in the morning, driving up the west coast of Scotland on a pretty miserable day, we've delivered something that I think transcends the mundaneness, I suppose, of the, of, of, of the raw file, certainly. Um, I think that's about it for now. One thing I would like to mention is that I have my own private expressive photographers forum. Uh, it started in the summer there and the group of people who've subscribed so far are producing this incredible community where you can post your images to people who understand that being different is good and not the fact that all your images have to look the same as everybody else. 
I, of course, produce content for there. There's videos, there's monthly Zoom sessions that we have to discuss various aspects of creativity and the expressive process. Um, there's all sorts of videos on there. There's already over 50 or 60 video library there covering all sorts of topics from portfolio building to expressive processing, the psychology and philosophy of photography. The members channel is the place for people to be if they want to be really serious about growing their personal creativity. Along with the books, the eBooks and the videos that I've produced, all of this stuff I would hope can deliver you a far better relationship with your landscape photography than maybe just trying to follow somebody else's process. You are the best in the world at being you. Join the Expressive Photographers Forum buy some of our ebooks and videos and I'm sure you will benefit from that in the long term and the short term. So thank you very much for watching. Give us a good old thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Uh, it's a real pleasure to talk to you again. On Sunday we're going to take a little break from these photos just because we had snow last weekend and I got out to go and play in it and Anne Christine and I were out filming in our local area and boy oh boy did we have an amazing time and I made some photographs that I'm just absolutely in love with. We'll pick up the processing from the Hebridean trip next Wednesday so tune in to make sure we don't miss the next episode of this and it's been a pleasure talking to you again. Uh, I will try and keep up my cheery chirpiness but I do get so obsessed with this the serious side of personal development and you know I, I'm very passionate about this but uh, yeah I'll try and bring some more jokes in uh, in future episodes but for now thank you very much from here Expressive HQ and uh, yeah see you next week bye for now mm -hmm.